guy that I know who does. This guy with the voice of, you know, like your TV announcer guy. He had one of those. So in this book, I believe they're called properties of logarithms. Laws of logarithms are essentially the same. What they allow us to do is they allow us to put together or take apart. So putting together, we refer to condensing. Taking apart, we refer to as expanding logarithmic expressions. Most of the time, we don't want to expand. We want to put together, but we still expand occasionally. So the way we describe expanding is we say we're going to rewrite a logarithmic, uh, a logarithm to contain no logarithms of products, quotients, or powers. That means we're going to break it up as much as we can, getting rid of all exponents, anything that's multiplied together that we can get rid of, and anything that's divided that we can get rid of. In the condensing, we tell you to rewrite a logarithmic expression into a logarithm of a single value. In other words, if you've got two logarithms, you can squish them together and make them as one. That becomes very handy when we solve logarithmic equations. <coughs> having a single logarithm equals something is much better than having this logarithm plus that logarithm equals something. And so that's why we do that. And then also in this section, it's not really a law, but we just throw it in here. We use the change of base formula so that we can calculate any logarithm on our calculator. You may recall when I had you graph a logarithmic <coughs> equation the other day, I told you the only one you could graph on your calculator were log base 10 and log base e, and I had a log base 3. This will show you how to rewrite the log base 3 so you can do it on your calculator. Now, your book has some vocabulary. Personally, I think it stinks, but because it's there, we're going to use it. Kind of. The three laws of logarithms, they refer to as the product rule. The reason I don't like that is because once you get to calculus, there is a product rule that is completely different than this one. In another book, and this isn't what I like, it's a much more descriptive title. It was called The Multiplication Becomes Addition Rule. Your book also has a thing called The Quotient Rule, which the better title is Division Becomes Subtraction. <coughs> And also the power rule where exponents become multipliers. Again, every one of those product, quotient, and power rules have a completely different meaning when it comes to calculus class. So that's why this is the first book I've ever seen name them that. And I've only seen one book name them the other things. So most people don't name them. They just say rule one, rule two, two and rule three, which then when they rearrange them, that causes problems. So what are these rules, and how are they going to work? Well, so my question to the back of the room is, can you read these? Everybody can see these because otherwise I'll write them up here. The product rule allows you to take a single logarithm where the stuff in the argument is multiplied together and break it up into two logarithms where the stuff in the argument is broken up so that the first thing goes after the first logarithm. The second part goes after the second logarithm, and in between your logarithms you have oops, a plus. By the way, this is supposed to be an A. And so is that. And uh, yeah, those are both supposed to be A's. I don't know how I got to change to B's. It also allows you to go backwards. So you can go from one logarithm to two, or from two logarithms back to one. Your quotient rule allows you to take your log base A of something where your argument has one thing divided by another thing and break it up so it looks very much like what we had before, except this time we have a minus in here. And if you think about exponents, what do you do with exponents when you divide? You subtract them. What do you do with the exponents when you multiply two things that have an exponent? You add them. That's what the, where these came from. And then finally, our power rule says if we have the argument raised to a power, we can take that exponent and put it out in front of the logarithm so we have y equals log base a of x. Now what we're going to do is basically apply these rules. That's pretty much all we do today is apply these rules. There's no word problems. There's no... There's nothing. There's no word problems with this job. We do it. So let's. Everybody got the rules written down so that we know what we, we can refer back to them as we need them. All right. And now for the one formula that's really nice. 
This is called the change of base formula. This works for any base A and lets me go to any other base which we call C. So if I have a log base A of B, the change of base formula says I can change it to a new base C by taking log base C of B, the thing that's in my argument, and dividing it by log base C of the original base. So you can see how handy this might be. When I had log base 3 of x, I could change that to base 10. This would be log base 10 of x divided by log base 10 of 3, and that would allow me to graph my log base 3 on my calculator. The reason we want to be able to do this is because our calculators only have base 10 and base e and none of the others. So by being able to change to any other base, usually 10 or e, we can calculate values. All right. So here's our first problem. We want to use the laws of logarithms <coughs> to rewrite log base 3 of this expression x to the 8th times the cube root of y to the 5th as a, in a form where all our logarithms have no products, quotients, or powers in the argument. So any suggestions for how to start? Well, let's look at our argument. We'll start with the argument. What's the big thing that happens? Multiplication. We have this thing multiplied by that thing. So which property law will allow us to, the product rule will allow us to break that up into two logarithms. It allows us to make it log base 3 of what? x to the 8th, the first thing, and then what? Plus, because it's the product rule, log base 3 of the cube root of y to the 5th. Alright, so far so good. Am I done with this piece? Why not? Because I still have an exponent, and I'm supposed to have no powers. So what can I do with this power? Take it to the front of the log. Stick it out front. It allows me, the power rule allows me to take my power and put it out front. So that becomes 8 log base 3 of x. Yes? What about this piece? Am I done with it? No. Now here's a problem. I know what to do if I have powers. What do I do if I have roots? Yeah, any root can be changed to a power. Yes, everybody knows that? Every root can be rewritten as an exponent. So if I rewrite my third root as an exponent of one third, then what I have here is log base 3 of y to the fifth to the one third. <coughs> yes. And when I have an exponent raised to an exponent, what do I do with the exponents? Multiply. Multiply them together. So over here I have 8 log base 3 of x plus log base 3 of y to the 5 thirds. Now that should make my life easier. This looks faint to me. So what can I do now? I can move this 5 thirds out to be in front of the logarithm. So I'll have 8 log base 3 of x plus 5 thirds log base 3 of y. Now, a couple of comments. One, you cannot skip from this step directly to this step. The rules only allow you to break up one thing at a time. You could go from this step to this step <coughs> to this one to that one. So you could skip this step right here because a lot of people just see that in their heads. I didn't skip it because I want to make sure everybody was clear on that. But you can't go straight from here to here because the rules don't allow you to do that. Second thing. What is the argument of this log base 3 and how do I know?